Well, John, let's start. Great news coming out of Durham this week. We've been awarded a professional women's team. That's great news for the region, isn't it? Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, really pleased for them. Um, great shot in the arm for women's cricket. Great shot in the arm for um, the club and everyone involved in it. Massive amount of work behind the scenes and to see it bear fruit. It'd be just so good for if you were a young uh, female cricketer in the North East now, you know you've got a pathway just exactly the same as the, the men have, really. Let's go back 30 years, I guess it's exactly the same situation as uh, the men's waiting 30 years ago, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's yeah, it's, the similarities are, are stark, really. It's absolutely the same process, the same. See a professional side close up, it's just brilliant. They've, they got the chance to follow in those their footsteps and, and, and make careers out of it. Let's move on to the men's and boys' academy side of things. Season's here again, it's come around pretty quick again, hasn't it? It's an exciting time of the year for oh, everyone involved. Yes, yeah, class. Uh, lads are chomping at the bit to get going and get outside. If it ever stops raining, we'll be, we'll be ready to go, yeah. So just nice to get out of the indoor school. And it seems like we've been in for a long time, but uh, yeah, it's, it's just about here now. Touched on the indoor school. How's pre-season gone for, for the academy and pathway sides? Yeah, really good. Yeah, it seems a long time. They've done a uh, start in November, really. Um, long block, three six-week blocks of practice. Um, yeah, they're, they're ready to go. They're absolutely class. Look as fit as they've ever been, strong as they've ever been, r r champion at the bit, ready to go. Just give us a sense of what they've been doing over the last few months in terms of getting ready for the season. Um, uh, sort of skills blocks for the first couple. Um, lots of uh, running, strength work in the gym. They've worked incredibly hard. Um, and then latterly just so, so sharpened up with some nets. Dubai. The guys went to Dubai in, in January. Just tell us a bit about that experience for the young, younger guys in the squad. Yeah, they, we had a super time. It's unbelievable pitches, like class opposition, just set the whole thing up beautifully for them. You, you know, to see a different style of cricket, um, like you see on the telly with the IPL, really, the fellas hitting it that you don't necessarily get on the northeast pitches here. Then, yeah, they've they're different, like chalk and cheese with their practice beforehand to after they're, they're trying to take the game on it's much more like you see on the telly now let's look ahead to the season there's been a change of structure within the ECB recommendations at the younger age groups just give us a sense of, of what's going on and why the reasons behind that yeah uh, just to postpone the start of the county age group cricket to give everyone the best possible chance of, of uh, staking their claim r rather than just picking the team for the, out from the kids that have been fortunate enough to play hardball cricket at a young age there's um, you, you know, trying to move that uh, first selection to later. Um, they get such a good deal now when they get into the county age group squads that you want to make sure that you've got absolutely the best players from the broadest possible backgrounds, the broadest possible um, exposure to cricket, really. Let's look ahead to the academy season. Without name and names, how's the squad looking ahead of the, the new season? Yeah, it's, quite, it's an exciting team, actually. It's an ex exciting squad. We've got good pace. Um, exciting batting yeah, and good spin. So uh, Hayden with the wickies just got into the first team and Robbie Bowman be short, uh, pretty quick behind him, I think. So yeah, all bases covered, just looking to get some good match practice or some good matches and um, fellas can start staking a claim for the second 11. Just give us an overview of the structure of the season. What, what does that look like from an academy point of view? Uh, academy, we get a few um, early season matches just friendly get them up and running then we go pretty quickly into the 2020 which is designed to precede the second 11 t20 then uh last la exam time starts and then we sort of reconvene again in in july for long format cricket during the summer holidays you touched on pre-season friendlies there the weather's hit the northeast hard hasn't it well all over the country i guess you start next friday against Cumbria, just tell us a bit about that, that fixture and how much you're looking forward to that. Yeah, well, we're really lucky. The uh, Sedba School are hosting ourselves and a Cumbria development side. We're going to have a 2020 round robin day. So that looks like the first. That was designed to be, so, like after we've played a few matches, the, the local friendlies have got, uh, have been hit by the weather, as have friendlies against other academies that we would normally have played in this time of year to get something running. So. We're just straight into 2020, unfortunately, but yeah, the lads will be ready for it. You touched on the academy players making way for the for this into the second the second team. Nine of the academy graduates playing for the seconds this week at Lancashire. That must be really pleasing for you to see these guys progressing from the academy into the second team. Yeah, they're ready for it, really. They, you know, it's a nice um, uh, 
pathway through. So uh, it's great that the club backs their local talent, gives them the opportunity. And second team cricket, when you're playing with and against seasoned professionals, that's where you really test your metal and show your skills. You touched on Hayden Mustard earlier. He's been part of the England under 19 team over the winter. Sebastian Hughes Pinon was with Spain and Jack Brassel with Namibia. You must be really pleased to see these guys now making their way at the international level. Yeah, it's class to see them in the international um, game. Just always been quite keen on trying to put Durham on the in, in the international footing and see fellas making their way there. So those three lads have done superbly to get recognised by their uh, countries at, at whatever age level that they've played. and. It's nice when they come back to the rest of the group and, the, and they've had a bit of success. That it just lifts the whole, whole spirit of the squad, really. And finally, an academy graduate in Matthew Potts got 149 last week against Warwickshire. You've obviously worked with him throughout the pathway. Was his batting something which you always thought he could do? Well, yeah, yeah. He was always a like, frontline batsman for us. It was his, his bowling sort of came on about 16, 17 when he started to grow, but he was always a class batsman it's always surprised me a bit that he hadn't done better with his batting so he scored an unbelievable 170 at Hartlepool against Cheshire and at that day you thought yeah he's definitely a frontline batsman um, but probably put all his eggs in the bowling basket to date but fabulous that he saved the game and, and showed his class with a bat